Coming up, we have our first house announcement for Halloween Horror Nights this year. Plus, we're going to answer a couple extra questions, and we might be doing them more regularly. No, we might not. Who knows? But from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 213 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by Disboards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your Universal Orlando vacation, head over to Disboards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I am joined alongside by my co-host, Mr. Arino Clavin. Yeah. Hello. I was building up the Antissa. I don't like using my last name and my first name like that though i know you don't but i if it's fine it's, it's i told you i like to just be rhino because well, then that's like your friend rhino the problem is when you also then refer to yourself in other uh mediums that we put out there no other... i was told that that's how i'm supposed to refer to myself that is not my choice so that is what it was given to me i would prefer to be only known as rhino like a Disney or a Universal team member, we use our first names to familiarize ourselves with each other. Well, you're not sure, so I'm just going to call you Ryan <laughs> for right now. Ryan Clavin. It could be Madonna. Um, okay, so let's start this introduction again. Hello, everyone. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Ryan the Rhino Clavin. <laughs> Ooh, the Rhino. Yes. Oh, fancy. Welcome. Welcome, Rhino. Thanks for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. Otherwise, as we're known as the Strawberry Boys. <laughs> well, that's, that's a, nobody understands that yeah, now. That's an inside joke, and I know how much our audience loves us when we make inside mm-hmm. jokes between the two of us. But we will not be uh, focusing too long on the inside jokes because we have just a little bit to talk about. And, God, I was waiting for this time of the year to come along, and it already has. And we have officially our first Halloween Horror Nights announcement and it wasn't really a surprise what they were going to announce first. I don't think anyone predicted any other house announcement before this one. Rhino, what house are we getting? Stranger Things. Boo doo boo doo boo doo boo doo boo doo. That was I a terrible wait. version of the intro. Well, it was the boo doo boo doo boo doo. I think it should be. I feel like it's D's, not B's. That was also terrible. I hope nobody remixes that like they did that time we did the Universal theme and nobody remembered the whole part of it. Oh, no, 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 they will. Um, I'll listen back to the Stranger Things theme, see if we nailed it. But yes, uh, that is our first house announcement for this year. Again, not really a surprise. Uh, the, The relationship with Netflix and Stranger Things started last year with the the hit house i mean this was this was the main draw of universal uh universal's halloween horror nights in 2018 so it wasn't really a surprise that they were going to bring it back the first house that they did last year was primarily set around well not primarily entirely set around season one and so anytime they don't cover an entire series in one year it's pretty much a guarantee that that it's probably going to come back and now it is uh, maybe not so much before in the past but we knew it would be coming back because uh, it's stranger things too was released and it's like oh here's more more content for you but we we two seasons of stranger things but you're only getting the first one so it made uh it made it perfect sense that we were going to get a season two house but the real kicker was the other part of it in the announcement is that it's not just based on season two. What? I didn't read that. I mean, I didn't know that. I just watched the video. I didn't read the thing. You have to read? Yes, you do have to read because in the official announcement from the 
official Universal Orlando blog, they said, This year you'll experience an all-new haunted house where you will travel back to the small town of Hawkins, Indiana and walk through some of the most terrifying scenes from Stranger Things 2 and 3. Ooh! I don't like that, though, because now that means next year we won't have Stranger Things, maybe. That is definitely a side effect of it. Uh, Stranger Things 3 will debut on Netflix this summer, July 4th. So as of this time, you know, it's just we we know we, we know what we know from the one trailer that was released with it. Did they release the second one, too, or just the no, first No, no, no. The first one's only been out for like a week or two, yeah. I think. Well, and then they had the original oh, teaser with the, the mall. Oh, the mall, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, the first like full look yeah. at it. Yeah, so one. yeah, the one teaser and then one full trailer with it. So uh, that's all we know from from it right now besides whatever speculation and stuff is out there. I don't, I don't follow the Stranger Things speculation boards that closely. Well, I don't want to be I want to be surprised. I do. No, I I enjoy it. It's it's very rare where I can I can put off even watching a show and get the surprise enjoyment out of it. I had that with Stranger Things. I continually had it then with Stranger Things too. It was not spoiled for me at all, and I definitely took my sweet time watching it as it came out. So I I love that, and I want the same thing to happen with Stranger Things three. But uh, it's just awesome that. Coming back to Halloween Horror Nights, it was, you know, it was a house that was pretty cool right away, and then it really grew on me, and then I kind of got tired of the nonsense and the long lines immediately after the event opened, trying yeah. to get into it, and then I, I fell back in love with it again, so uh, it was a solid house. I can only imagine what they're going to do with it this time around, but they also go on to say, not only will you come face-to-face with snarling demo dogs, but you will also make your way through iconic scenes and locations from Chief Hopper's cabin to the Starcourt Mall. Cool. Okay, I I thought I don't know anything about the mall yet. So all I know is that the mall is where Steve has a job in the third season, and his best friend Dustin shows up at the mall with him. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm, I mean, obviously, now we know the mall is going to factor in, and what? How could it not be an '80s mall? Think about a mall in a house. That sounds fun to me. We're going to be going through a Spencer's Gifts. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hope I hope Robin Sparkles is blaring in the background <laughs> for it. Oh, go to the mall. No, it's not. That's Oh, yeah, it is. All, I forgot. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm not that up on my Robin Sparkles, but I, I should. I should reinvent that. But Chief Hopper's Cabin, that's going to be fun. So what do we think? Is there going to be a... Uh, a little little eleven sitting in there eating and being all pissed off about yeah. everything. Well, I was gonna say it's gonna be that scene where she breaks all the glass. Yeah, and the and she gets angry. Yeah. Um, I know they haven't said it, but the part that I'll be looking forward to is the dead pumpkin patch. Oh, I mean it's yeah. it's in the it's in the artwork, so I'm gonna assume it's gonna be in there. But um, yeah, I, what's I would say that interesting makes the most is sense. this bus from the first season is in here too. Still though. There's no bus in the second season, I don't think. So, um, but yeah, Dead Pumpkin Patch. Can't wait for that. I love pumpkins with around Halloween. I know that seems stupid, but you don't really see a lot of that pumpkin iconography built into like haunted houses all the time anymore. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So it, it definitely will have a sinister side to it. Um, so it's going to go from Halloween to Fourth of July then, because we're if I know the we know the third season takes place during the summer. Yeah. Of 1985. Yeah. You think the Boys of Summer will be playing? Uh, I hope it is. Otherwise, what's, what will what's they play? The point? Yeah. yeah. What's the no, point? Uh, so we know the, the two scenes that they just said there, and you mentioned the pumpkin patch. Uh, from season two, I know you were more enamored with season two than I was. Not that I had an issue with it. I just thought season one was one of those. It was, it was a perfect show. The very first season season long not that the second one wasn't good it just it didn't have me quite as gripped but are there any other iconic moments that that you would want from season two i mean i know you want i know you want as much a uh, red power ranger as you can possibly get billy yeah yeah billy is his name on stranger things i know the name of the red power ranger is jason don't come at me um yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think through the season a little bit. I think it would be fun to see the kids in the house in their Ghostbuster outfits. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> that would be cool, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to assume that we're going to see the um, 
not flamethrower, but that's what I always call it. Flay, flay. What's the monster's name? The flay. Stranger Things monster name. It's a, like a flay something. I literally just we. I had a beer based on it at that Bottle Logic event. Are the demogorgons. No, the demogorgons are the little guys. The main bad guy. The main oh, thing yeah, is the big um, spidery looking yeah, monster. Um, um, and it's from uh, it's from it's the mind flayer. Mind yes. flayer. Yeah. Um, I completely just had a brain. Yeah. So I'll be that. interested to see if he's going to be in it because they do show the lightning in the in the sky with him over there. Yeah. So I wonder if like we'll have. But I don't know how they do it. You know, because it's kind of. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'll be interested to see how they do some It'll of the effects. Way. Do you think they're going to uh, include Eleven's uh, side story in there where she no. goes to the city and gets all tough? I think they should have Nancy's mom in there. Yeah? Yeah. I'd like to see the scene where Billy tries to seduce the mother. <laughs> just a random, like, you're walking around and there's a Billy in there. Like, just... <laughs> with really, really tight pants on and the mother just, like, in her kimono robe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would make absolutely no sense, but why not put it in there? I'll be interested to see if we go back to Joyce's house again, mm -hmm. since there is, you know, some of the, the, the scenes there. I'll be curious if we go into the facility when, like, you know, the end scene when Eleven is, uh, well, spoiler, I just ruined everything. Uh, um, you're I almost fine. did. You're fine. But, you know, that scene where there's some uh, things happening at the end. Yep. I wonder well, if we'll go through there. I, I, I'm assuming because it's similar. They would. They built that kind of set for the last one, so yeah, I don't know. So it might be able to reuse. It's just with two seasons being put in there. I mean, right now you have to condense it down. I do think that season two didn't have as many iconic moments as season one, so that could make their lives a lot easier. That could be the reason why they're they're blending the two together. But yeah, the the show leaps to 1985 and. It's going to be just a complete di different atmosphere for the. Well, for there's the a new monster, one. so it yeah. won't be just a demogorgon, and it won't be the mind flayer. There's that third monster you see yeah. in the preview, so I'm yeah. sure that'll be in there somewhere too. Yeah, but I'm I'm really pumped for it, so I am expecting it in terms of like the nerdy side of things, but with what we care with it in the park and stuff, I'm guessing that it's probably going to be in the exact location, same location that it was last time around. It needed every little bit of that cue that they had um in front of the universal's uh music plaza stage i mean it's it, it didn't fill up every single night but there was plenty of nights that i know that we both saw it and we're like goodness gracious okay. that is a really big line yeah. really full of a lot of people so uh, i i would expect it to still be there it will be back at universal studios hollywood if you're even going to waste your time going to halloween horror nights at universal studios hollywood two rough years in a row yeah i don't uh, is it's the third time the charm maybe they'll try and turn it around this year i don't know i i, I i'm not super hopeful but it's it's been a shame I, we literally we met um people this last week while we were in california who were talking about it and without knowing that what we had said about it or anything um they were they were explaining how they felt about it and it was literally what we said about too many dark hallways with people just opening and closing the windows to scare you yeah and, and unless mr peekaboo is going to be behind one of them I'm that's, not that's going to truly terror. be scared. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very, very exciting. So I love when we start getting to talk about Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, we still have months and months and months to go before we get there. Remember, it will be starting September 6th and running through November 2nd. So uh, biggest year ever with that. Ten houses total, five scare zones, and live entertainment still. So we have nine more houses left to be revealed, five scare zones, and live entertainment. I'm going to already assume that Academy of Villains will be returning in some way. Uh, maybe another show, maybe not. Definitely Academy of Villains. So, um, But uh, if, if it's along the same lines as last year, probably, probably sticking mostly just to Academy of Villains. But who knows? crazier things could happen so that uh, any any final thoughts to say on stranger things right now no nope. just that i love it all i want to say is the truth is out there mm. 
And that, that will wrap up that conversation about that. So uh, we got a suggestion in last week's show that I didn't really think of before that is easily something that we could do. And that was that, uh, you know, we, we go sometimes a big gap without having question and answer episodes. So uh, it was suggested, well, why aren't we actually just answering questions every single episode? And that's something I didn't necessarily think about before. Why couldn't we just throw it in a little bit, especially in a week like this where, you know, we we were gone in California for a week and got back and there was absolutely really nothing happening except this announcement. So what what to do, what to do? Well, let's answer a couple questions. So and in this round, uh, we're going to take we're going to take just two questions and answer them real quick uh, based on based on questions that we still have from the uh, from from our original Facebook posts and such uh, where we did the question and answer. But moving forward with it, I'm going to ask that everyone who is watching this on YouTube, uh, go ahead and, you know, continue to in the comments down below. Now, besides leaving us a uh, feedback, your thoughts and input on what we're talking about, go ahead and also leave a question. Uh, like I told you, I don't always do a good job at responding to every comment on there, but I do always go through through and I, I read every single comment. So uh, feel free to ask your questions down in there and and we might pick it as maybe the one of the two that we answer on next week's show at the at the very end of it. To just kind of continue uh, continue the engagement with you and make sure that you're getting the most out of what you need in terms of planning a vacation. So I, I think that it, it's a win-win all around if we go ahead and do that. So um, we are going to move on towards with that and move on forward with that, not towards it. So I'm going to start with a question that was from, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to start with a question, then I'm going to finish with a question. So it's not that, not that out of there, but I'm going to continue trying to delay this out as long as possible until I found the one that I wanted. Here we go. This one comes from Scott DeMello. And Scott says, looking to rent a car while on property. I understand the airport has rentals, but could... Could or I screwed that. Well, I didn't screw it up. He screwed up how we wrote it. Sorry, Scott. Not trying to be mean here. But Scott said, looking to rent a car while on property. I understand the airport has rentals, but could are there on-site or nearby rental car services I could take advantage of? Keep up the amazing work, guys. Thank I appreciate you. that. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, I really do appreciate that. And uh, that's a, that's another one of the feedback is sometimes feedback. <laughs> the, for, right. Straight from the feedback. Yeah, straight from the feedback. Uh, some feedback we get a lot of times are people saying like, oh, we'd love to like send you guys stuff. And because I know a lot of podcasts, I listen to one in particular where they'll open up stuff that they get sent and then talk about it on the air. And, you know, nothing ever like, it's not like, here, let me send you jewels. Let me send you a jewel CD. Let me send you uh, the jewel of the Nile. It's nothing ever like that. But, it's, you know, like a, a nice fun letter, stuff like that. So it's something maybe we'll do eventually down the road. But who knows? Every time we do get sent anything, we just get uh, really, really big glares from John and Kevin. Like, oh, another package. Yeah. Every time something comes in. <laughs> oh, are you asking people to send you things? No. no. But we might. But not things that we want. Things that you guys want to send to us to get our reactions about when we open it up live on air. But anyways, back to Scott's question. Uh, Rhino, rental cars at Universal Orlando. They got them? I don't know. Okay, expert at helping you plan the perfect <laughs> universal vacation. I'm not an agent. Visit us on the web at theuniversalpodcast.com. That's not us. No, uh, well, that's uh, maybe I can help you out now. And, Please. Uh, okay. I live within walking distance. I don't know. Well, you might need a rental car one day. What happens the next time your family comes in town and says, Rhino, we want to come find you. We don't trust that Libuber thing that's out there and we really need a rental car but we didn't get one from the airport what to do take a bus 
<laughs> wow. No, I, I think you respect your family enough to never suggest the public Orlando transportation public transportation yeah. in Florida. So I guess I shouldn't say Florida is a handle, but definitely, uh, definitely Orlando. Don't it's a mixed bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't. And that's the and that's not their bag, baby. But uh, lucky enough for us in this case, uh, Universal Orlando hotels actually are very accommodating when it comes to needing rental cars, and that they actually have rental car locations at. Every Every single one of the hotels. So uh, it actually just was... I didn't know this. Yep. No, no. Avis is the official rental car partner with Universal Parks and Resorts. And because of that, they will have them at the Lowe's Hotels in there. So Portofino Bay, Royal Pacific, Hard Rock Hotel, Sapphire Falls, Cabana Bay, Aventura Hotel. I would pretty much go out of my way and say when Endless Summer opens up, that you will also be able to rent a car from Universal's Endless Summer Resort. But yeah, it's I, obviously it's something that that's that, convenient. It is convenient because uh, another thing that I like with it is maybe you just want a a day car. Yeah, from there, and you you want to rent it out and then return it the very same day. Uh, Universal overnight parking fees aren't awful at the hotels. You know they range to fourteen dollars to expensive to very expensive if you valet, but but. You know, so you might not want it overnight and bringing it from the airport. You might not need it that much, but if you do want to venture out from that day, it might be it might be helpful. So uh, you know, it it was it, they're offering now at the hotels, and it was part of a big partnership with Universal in terms of uh, making sure that they could get any give anything to the guests that they would possibly want. And I do understand that Avis vehicles are also available through Universal's online booking tool. Again, I haven't I haven't ever really used that because I haven't ever had to, but I do understand it is something that is available with that. So I hope that helps answer your question, Scott. It is available for you to get a rental car, especially if you're staying at one of the hotels. I'm assuming I'm assuming that even if you're not staying in one of the hotels, you can still be fine. But definitely if if you are staying at one of the hotels, you should be fine. So uh, that will that is our first question that we are going to answer, and now I need to find the second one because I did not write it down in another place, and I feel terrible for that. But once again, if I continue scrolling down, I will potentially get there and have something that I can answer for you. I should get a lot better with this, but I don't it sounds like know it. What, what's that? It sounds like it, yeah. Oh, you're doing a lot of help there, helping me out. I don't know what to talk it. about. I, I know I have one picked out specifically, but I didn't like highlight it or anything in there, and now I'm like really looking through, and I don't know if it was over on the other thread or if it was on this one, and I think it was... I think it was over on the other one. At, at this point, just talk amongst yourselves while I'm getting there. So Talk amongst yourselves. Let me know if you like tea time. Let me know if you want something else. I can I can be very flexible with it. I genu- I feel like I'm going crazy here because I can't find it. So um, I'm going to just answer a different question because I can't find the one that I wanted. This one comes from Pat. Pat said, I have mobility problems and require an ECV. Is Universal Parks handicap friendly? I want to go, but I'm afraid these parks are not meant for me. Rhino, thoughts, opinions? Oh no, I think I think 100. percent I think they're all mobile friendly. I mean, they some of them have their specific challenges. Um, you know, we we talked about on the show about um, Rip Ride Rocket having some challenges with guests with disabilities um, and things. But I mean, I think they're not difficult parks to get around in. And I think that they can be accommodating some attractions. I mean, you're not going to be able to do everything. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the deal in terms of ECVs. So I will say universal is definitely not completely mobility friendly. Uh, you are free to rent an ECV or bring your own and ride it all around the park. Yeah. yeah that's what I mean. Um, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't have a lot of problems where you're going to run into the most problems are in places like the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Uh, you cannot drive an EC three and EC three. 
Just saying <laughs> things that wow. pop in your head. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Uh, you cannot drive an ECV through any of the, the stores in there. It's not possible uh, at all. I mean, I'm sure you could try to make your best college effort on it, but these were designed to feel authentic to the movies as much as possible. And they're like how a typical small shop would be set up in a small place. You're not driving an ECV through mm-hmm. there. So don't don't even go and try. So it's something where you'd have to you would have to get up and be able to make your way through there uh, by by walking or standing. I mean, obviously, if you're completely to the point, like if you're if you're completely unable to get up and walk, you're probably in a wheelchair that can be accessible through there, but especially the big ECVs that they run out of parks, those things do not turn on a dime. And mm, yeah. you will just be running into every shelf, knocking stuff over, and it will get very bad fast. Uh, a lot of the big attractions will not let you, pretty much all of the attractions, I think, still at this point, will not let you drive an ECV through the actual queue. You have to transfer into a... A, uh, a a wheelchair, and that then runs into the next issue. That if you don't have someone to push you, then you have I, I to under your problem. own power. Yeah. yeah, and I ran into it only like once or twice while I worked there, where someone was alone when they had to transfer in there, and it was one of those things you you're not supposed to yeah. take them through, but you still do it out of the kindness of your heart. But it's and sometimes it was a circumstance where uh, with Forbidden Journey, at least it's a very big rarity. But when all of the transfer chairs were gone and there were still people who needed to ride, really couldn't wait. We'd be able to take uh, we'd be able to take ECVs up in an elevator and then have them park in one of the hallways and walk just a short bit to get on the stationary platform. But uh, it's so it really is mixed. I. I work from working there. I can see that Universal doesn't always design the parks with that in mind, but it's not like it's they don't do anything that's not they're not following. intentionally excluding people. Yeah, I don't think they're they're not like completely ignoring the ADA. Uh, they're not they're not doing that. But sometimes they do make decisions that uh, that aren't as welcoming for guests with disabilities yeah. and and in terms of and sometimes it's decisions they make when it comes to the actual rides like not even talking about ECVs per se but riding with with you when you might have uh, other issues you know it's it's ultimately decisions that ride manufacturers make not necessarily the universal's operations on that so sometimes they can't help you even further with that i don't know i don't think that's your issue i think your issue from based on the question is mostly the ecv question and already already went there with that but i you know back in the day um i went there once with michael and carol bowling and carol had to spend most of her time in an ecv and her big criticism of universal was that as someone in an ecv and having to use it there was it wasn't that hard to get around, but there just wasn't really stuff to do. Well, I feel terrible about my answer. <laughs> so, no, it's not. But that's it's a perception thing. I don't think it's going to be any one question. I I would have agreed with you probably way back before. It was until I heard heard the mix bag of criticism while I was working there, and then from other personal stories. But I thought I thought Universal was. Gen- it was pretty much uh, accessible, kind of like Walt Disney World was. But then you get other other feedback that makes you you question it a little bit. But that's a good thing to leave down in the comments below and let us know if you've had issues with it or experience with it and add that to, to our knowledge base so we can help people more in the future with it. So um, that's the two questions we have, Rhino. I'll let you go to bed now. Oh, I'm sorry. I am <laughs> like I I had a I take Dramamine when I fly and I took it too close to my flight and it stays in your body for 24 hours. So today has been a yeah. struggle. <laughs> you should really mute the mic before you yawn loudly because I know you get on Pete for doing that. I didn't yawn. You just yawned four times. I don't remember yawning. <laughs> I'm having it was an issue. Very loud. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. I know. 
It's gonna, people are just going to say take a nap. I feel terrible about my answer now, too. Just take, just take a nap. It's going to be okay. No. It's going to be fine. No, I want to go to Universal now. Go wake up. Go on them Potter attractions. It's yeah. going to be fun. But uh, those are the two questions we're answering this week. Uh, again, leave your comments down below on YouTube if you're listening to this on iTunes. I know you obviously can't do that. Tweeter. So, uh, yeah, you can always feel free to tweet it at at Diz Universal or send us an email, your podcast at Diz Unplugged, and we will find it in those ways. But um, yeah, giving you options. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you so much, everyone out there for listening and watching. Thank you, Rhino, for having this conversation. If you need any extra information, head over to DizUnplugged.com, home of the show notes page for the show and all the others on the Diz Unplugged podcast network. You can get links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more, including our email address, which again is your podcast at DizUnplugged.com. Dot com. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Hit that bell so you get notified anytime we have a new video. And leave us those comments and questions for next week's show down below in the comments. And hit that thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, and then if you're listening to this on iTunes, go ahead, subscribe, rate, and review us. And of course, if you need extra information in the meantime to help you plan your universal vacation, you can always uh, go to our site for more of the stuff that we talked about, universal.wdwinfo.com, or you can continue with conversation with other Universal fans over on the Universal forums at disboards.com. So once again, thank you so much to Rhino and everyone out there for uh, dealing with me in this little mess that we just had here. And we will see you again next week with another episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name. <laughs>